Alexa, turn outside light on. Okay. Alexa, turn outside light white. Okay. Alexa, play John Lennon, Imagine. Imagine by John Lennon. What up brothers, it's Clip King returning. Welcome back to my channel. After quite a long break, today I'll be reviewing the John Lennon figure by Molecule 8. Right, I'd like to start off by saying a massive thank you to the guys at Molecule 8 who have kindly sent me this figure. It is the first figure I've received direct from a company that's completely free of charge to me. I actually spoke to VJ over a year ago, round about the time he did a podcast, I don't know if you guys remembered it, and he actually said that I would be receiving this figure, whether I wanted to review it or not, it was up to me, but he'd actually seen my reviews prior to that and wanted me to be one of the guys who were going to send one to. So I don't know if it's come directly from him or the guys at Molecule 8. Also, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Lee Ward at The Good, The Bad and The Robots, the UK online store. They do sell to England and Europe, the way I understand it. So if you're looking to pick this figure up, I suggest you can either buy direct from Molecule 8 or from The Good, The Bad and The Robots. I will put the links below. Um, and like I said, a massive thank you to them. Also, this goes without saying that even when I knew I was going to review this figure, and going to be receiving it. I would only ever do a review if I could say what I honestly thought. I am going to do that through this review. I'm going to tell you the things I really like about it, the things I would change, anything that I totally dislike about it. I am going to say that because if that were to jeopardize me receiving any more figures, then so be it. But I think if the guys at Molecule 8 can take constructive criticism, that would be really good for a company just starting out. Also, from the community's point of view, this figure's got a lot of hate. A lot of people have gone overboard and a lot of people that probably wouldn't even want to buy a figure like this. They've jumped on a bandwagon and attacked this company because they've said it's lay and they've promised too much and so on and so forth. And I sometimes think that is the case. It did run over, but look at all the Optoys figures that's run over. Yet Optoys don't seem to get this slaver and they forget that Optoys are more than 10 years into their... Um, their production. So I said cut the new company slack. Blitzway have done a great job, we're quite new. And like I said, from opening this figure, I can see Molecule 8 for the first attempt have done a great job. But that's not to say it's perfect. So please stay tuned and I'll make my thoughts very apparent. And I only want to make this one video and let it go off into the world of YouTube and do whatever it's going to do views wise. I don't particularly care. That's why I've cut some music in at the beginning. But I do want to cover all my thoughts so that I ain't got to answer the comments. You will know exactly what the figure does, what it includes. I will say Dean Knight's already got a review up on this. And I assume a couple of other guys, particularly Americans, will be doing their review also. Uh, so, I'm just going to review it like I always do. I'm going to get the scores and be brutally honest. So, here we go. Let's get on to the packaging. I'll start off by saying I really like the packaging. Particularly the quality of it. Everything feels very thick... Uh, very thick, very good quality. There's no dents or bends and everything. It was shipped very nicely. It's got the classy white look, as you see, with the John Lennon signature, Imagine, and then the mosaic from the Strawberry Fields Memorial in New York. Again, in the middle, it says Imagine. And in a separate box, you received the guitar, which was sort of advertised as a complimentary guitar, although I feel that it was always sort of a must because they couldn't give you the piano within the set. So I think an instrument were always going to be a must for this figure. So it would have felt a little bit light. Both figure and guitar, like I said, are packaged really nicely. Very good quality card. Uh, it has the inlay packaging, so the blue felt. And uh, yeah, it's just very secure, very nicely done, very classy. I do like the design. I'm glad they didn't sort of make it feel low end by putting a picture of the figure on the front. I just think uh, the box, with it being all white particular, as a backdrop just gives off the, the video to imagine feel. And I do really like it. For that reason, I am going to score the packaging a five from a possible five. Right, rolling on to the likeness. Very important on this figure. 
I'm gonna tell you about when I first saw the head sculpt, what I thought it were, and then sort of putting two, to, two and two together and realizing that this was the figure that were coming. Also, I'm gonna use the standard that I've been using for the likeness category, which means on the left-hand side of the screen, I will now have a spotlight coming from underneath and the camera light will be on. But shortly on the right-hand side of the screen, I will show you the likeness with no lighting on. So you get two different effects, I'm guessing. Particularly, you're not gonna notice any of the light in his glasses. Obviously, there is two head sculpts as well, so I will show both. There is also two different pairs of glasses, and again, I will show both of those. So, with the light on, let's have a good look around the head sculpt. While I'm showing you around, I just tell you, the first time I saw this sculpt was on a Facebook page, and it was the page of K.A. Kim, and I think it was still in sort of the production state it were i can't remember if they'd been like a, a master sculpt done and it had been painted or if it was just a sculpt but i remember seeing it and thinking god that's very good i actually contacted k.a kim to say is that a custom piece you're doing uh if so who's it for or is it going into production what's the situation i then within a week was asked by Lee Ward initially if i'd be interested in sort of at the time i weren't doing any reviews at all if I'd be interested in receiving this figure to review it, and it would be due out shortly after that. Like I said, this is probably a year ago. And then I thought, well, I've seen one Lennon head sculpt that I really like. Could that be it? It turned out it was it. I didn't know the company at that point. I'd just seen the sculpt by K.A. Kim, and I thought it were amazing. Now, about six months ago, this figure appeared at a toy fair or a comic convention, something like that. And I noticed it started getting a lot of hate. They were saying that the sculpt were a mile away from the prototype. Uh, they were saying that the head were way too small for the body, were out of proportion. They were saying it were very crude, that the hair looked very messy and blah, blah, blah. I never got involved and I never popped up to say, I've got this figure coming, I'll tell you the truth when I receive it. I thought, because if I don't receive the figure, I don't want to be too gutted about it. Um... And I don't want to get into this sort of argument about this sculpt or the paint job or whatever if I'm not going to see the figure in hand. It becomes like a futile exercise. Now, luckily, I have now received the figure. I've seen some photos along the way. Some photos made it look terrible, I'll be honest. And even Molecule 8's own Facebook page posted some final product shots. And I would say they either need somebody to work from who can pose figures better or they need a better photographer because I don't think that they made this figure look as good as it really is or as good as I'm going to make it look in this video. And I'm not bigging myself up, although I normally do do that, but I just don't think that any of the social media they've used have done this figure or company any favours. So I will just say that. Now, my thoughts on the head sculpt. Of the two, this is my favourite. I like the neutral look. I do prefer the see-through glasses over the yellow ones, the yellow tinted ones, although like I said, I will show you both. I think it's very accurate. I think it has got depth. I think the skin texture is very good. I think the air is very good and very clean. I hope that comes across in the uh, camera. It will be in 4K, so please check that out. I do like how the air lays. I do like the fact that when you move the sculpted sections of the air, he does have sideburns underneath that. I think they've done a really good job and is by far, by far the best John Lennon available. Now, you might say, well, it's only one. It's not only one because Necker did one quite a long time ago. And obviously that's a million miles behind this. So this is a pretty perfect Ed Sculpt wise representation of John Lennon. Somebody put a comment on yesterday on one of the pictures and said, is it just me or does he look? slightly cross-eyed now if you look at a lot of pictures of john lennon i don't think his eyes are sort of even as such sometimes he looks like he's wall-eyed which would mean his eyes are out sometimes he looks slightly cross-eyed obviously he had terrible eyesight and did from a young age we're even wearing glasses during the beatles and obviously he's not wearing these glasses for the look he did have poor eyes so i think that the eye sculpt or the paint job on the eyes is done accurately and represents the character very well. 
So that answers that. Do I think it's as good as the initial prototype? In all honesty, I don't. But I put this down to the community. If you're still expecting to receive figures that we see in prototype shots 10, 15 years down the line, I think you're either a newcomer to the hobby or you don't know how things work. The initial photo you see, and I've said this a, a thousand times before, it is sort of the, the master sculpt, probably painted by hand still by a top artist. It's not one of the recreations that you buy that's come off a conveyor line in a factory somewhere. You're seeing the figure at its absolute best, shot under photographic, uh, sorry, shot with top quality photographic um, cameras and lighting. And that is what you're seeing. If you think when you buy that figure, that's the one you're gonna get, then you're very naive. There's always a drop off. And I think, and I think they also, they sort of fade down the lightnesses over time. And that's mainly in the paint job. The paint is never as vibrant as you see in the prototype shots. So bear that in mind. If you expected it to be that, then like I say, you're naive. Is it as good as any other figure I've got? I would say, yeah, I've got a lot of good figures still. And this is up there with that quality. It's Octoys, Blitzway, Enterbay quality, no doubt. And it is priced in that range, so so it should be. Uh, like I said, I do prefer this sculpt. I think it's really nice. When I display it, it will be wearing this head with these glasses, but probably in one of the other outfits. To score the head, I've, I've got to say, I didn't expect to get the prototype shot. So I'm buzzing how good it actually were because like i said the shots we saw at the comic convention from about five six months ago they made it look very very bad to the point where i were kind of agreeing with some of the some of the comments that were going around at the time although i never posted any so in hand what i will say is to my mind it gets a five out of five so now onto the second portrait which is advertised as the singing sculpt is a nice addition Again, nice clean work on it. Nice uh, work on the air, in the eyes, the teeth. It does have the accurate sort of slightly booked front teeth. And if you look really closely, a slight chip on the front right too. Again, pretty accurate. Now, obviously here he's got the light bouncing off his face. So from the spotlight down to his right hand side, or to the right hand side as you're looking at it, should I say, and also the light on the camera from about three or four inch away. Nice clean work. Obviously it's gonna catch the light in his glasses. Notice now he's got the yellow tinted glasses. Very nicely done. Like I said at the start, I do prefer the neutral head sculpt and I think the neutral head sculpt is more accurate although this would be an option if he'd got the piano or when he's got the guitar in hand. Uh, nice addition. But like I said, if I'd have been scoring just this head sculpt, I'd have probably give this one a four, but because of the strength of the first portrait, that is why I've scored the likeness a five from a possible five. Right, moving on to outfit. As you see, I've got the outfit that he comes wearing in the box. So it consists of the awesome cowboy boots with the magnetized bottoms, a pair of slightly flared black trousers with a faux leather belt, the sort of velvet single-breasted jacket with the colored patterns on it, the sort of blue dress shirt, and then the glasses if you want to include those. Awesome quality, I will say. Everything you feel feels as good as anything else that you've ever felt. I think the jacket is tailored really nicely, particularly if the button is closed. I'm not gonna do it, close it for the review because it takes some doing. And I will say that when you receive it, the lapels will probably stand a little bit proud from the shoulder. Mine have been slightly glued and holds them in position uh, perfectly. So they could have done that straight from the factory, although they didn't. So it gives the people the uh, choice of if they wanna glue that down i chose to because in the position i got him they were stood up so uh, and it made it look like the sort of the lapel was above the uh, sorry the collar was uh, sort of above his chest so to speak so mine have been glued down um i will say i'm going to mention the buttons on the dress shirt are nicely to scale 
and the shirt does close with a Velcro fastening, which is a nice touch. I'm going to mention that because I'm going to get onto the military shirt shortly. The blazer has sort of a, a bigger button, which I feel would be in scale to a jacket, because obviously you get a smaller button on a shirt than you would on a jacket. And it is a sort of a real hole, and you would use the uh, the button fastening device to do that. Although I didn't want to button it to have to unbutton it, because I am going to change it. It's going to go through every outfit during the review. So I do feel the buttons are to scale. Awesome tailoring. I will say throughout the boots are amazing. I will show those off of the figure shortly because I want to show the design on the shin and on the calf area. They are really nicely done. I want to move it on to the next outfit and tell you about an inaccuracy with that. I'm rolling on to the second outfit. As you can see, still got on the black cowboy boots the black trousers and then the slash neck long sleeve t-shirt in black as you can see I've got in with a guitar over the shoulder just a slight uh, change for the pose so, yeah got that looking pretty sweet and he's got the yellow glasses on obviously with the uh, neutral head sculpt I think it looks very nice so just talking about the outfit, again, like I mentioned, the boots are amazing. The trousers are really nicely done. The t-shirt is a nice material and fits quite nicely. I will say when you're putting it on, it does sort of grab the rubberized body a little bit. So it's a bit of a pain in the arse, but not too bad. I think it is accurate apart from one massive thing that's missing. If you watch the making of Imagine on YouTube, you'll notice the t-shirt that he's wearing when he actually plays like a demo of Imagine to the guys in the studio. He's got this black top on, but he's actually got a red, I don't know if it's a pie tree, if it's stitched in, apple, it's somewhere there in red. So I don't know why that's missing, and I, or I don't know why there's a sticker or a patch that uh, Molecule A didn't include. But I will cut that, uh, I will cut that image in if I've got it. But the look is quite nice. It's of the time, obviously. Uh, a lot of people say in this outfit, it does look giraffe neck. So I'm going to get in there. Um, I will come back to this on the body. But uh, I just wanted to show you, you can make your own decision. I've sort of got imposed in a way. Don't see no sort of obvious gaps. And the neck doesn't look overly long to me. Now, I think it's all down to the posing. I might as well talk about it here, but I will come back to it when I'm talking about the body. If you have the neck straight upright, then you find that the sort of rubberized section doesn't fit into the neck very well. If you have the neck, sort of inside the neck, there's sort of a, a metal neck peg that obviously the head sits on. If you push the neck for, forward, not as for, far forward as it'll go, but slightly tilt it forward like a human neck would be, you're very rarely neck extended as a human. You always have a slight slouch. Now, if you position that body correctly, like I think I have done there, I don't think it gives off the image of giraffe neck too much. Slightly. I'm not going to lie and say it's not existent, but I also understand why they did it. Because if they're not giving it the neck that they have given it, then the other two outfits that have an eye collar shirt, his head is going to be sort of lost inside the collar of the shirt. So that is probably why the neck is the length it is. I think that looks... I know I like to take credit for my posing ability, but it's not all about dynamic poses. That, to me, is... I don't say it so much nowadays because I don't do a lot of videos, but all my long-term followers will know when I look at a pose like that and how I've got his head situated in particular, there's only one word for it. Beautiful. And that does look beautiful. Tell me I'm wrong. And while I'm talking about the outfit, let me show the awesome cowboy boots, which are very, very accurate and do go on very nicely. Nice embroidery work, stitch work looks very good. Sort of designs on the shin section. 
Yeah, really nice touch. Just take one now. See the magnet in the eel. Look at the uh, sort of the leather sole. They stick really well, I've got to be honest. Then you get the sort of flip flops or sandals or slides, whatever you want to call them, with the sculpted feet. In the magnet section on the bottom. See how hard it is? It's really nicely done. Really great idea. The base is really classy. I have eye gloss white furniture in my living room and dining room, and it would just go so well with those. Just like I said, no, no need for a, a crutch grabber or a waist grabber. This stand is awesome. And I just wanted to show how the footwear, how the footwear works with it. Right, quick interlude. Doing your buttons using this button fastening device. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna pass it to my daughter. Just hold it. Just keep focused on his shirt, lad. So I find that you're better off getting the metal section going down through there, put the button inside the wire, so it's got a tight, can you see that? Get nice and close so they can see the wire through button, and then pull upwards and pull the shirt downwards. Can you see? And it's as easy as that. Obviously be careful, because you don't want to pull your button off, and you don't want to sort of fray your shirt too much, but that is how you do the buttons. So moving on to the third outfit, and this is the outfit from the Dick Cavett show. Is the black boots, the white trousers, sort of the uh, cargo trousers with the big pockets on the side. Moving up into the olive military shirt, sort of the Vietnam issue shirt. Uh, people have asked about the button size. I used to have a military shirt like this and I think the button style and size is pretty perfect. Obviously it's bigger than the dress shirt buttons and you have to fasten them to get them on. I kind of wish it were the Velcro uh, fastening and obviously they were just the faux button stuck on it but I do think the button size is accurate. So I like that about it. What I don't like about it is the fact that you have to put the military patches on yourself. Now the patches do look accurate and obviously you can put them you could put them where you want them really, but there is specific places for them to go. Now I am going to stick them on. I know they are stickers, so they will go on, but I'm guessing over time that won't last very long. So I'm thinking at some point I'm going to have to glue these on. So I have checked back the source material. So like I said, the Dick Cavett show, you'll find it on YouTube. And basically it has the military stripes on either upper arm. It has the it's sort of black circle with a white star above the uh, military stripes on his upper left arm and then it has sort of a blue and red patch i'm not entirely sure what it is that actually goes on the right pocket so i am going to put those on so when i come back you'll see them so as you see i put them on quite easy to do See, he's just got the military stripe down that arm. This one goes on the uh, right breast pocket. Actually, if you look at the video as well, his button is actually undone on his pocket and the patch sort of goes behind the flap of the pocket. So that is pretty accurate, but the button would need unfastening for it to be 100% accurate. And as we turn this side, sort of black shield so you can zoom in on the patches for you kind of the indian head goes on the upper shoulder and then the military stripes goes just below that so that is how it looks when the stripes are done just get the camera back in focus now this is my favorite of the three outfits not to suggest that this is the best quality of the three outfits because i actually think that is the velvet jacket and the look straight from the box although this to me aside from the imagine video if you were going to display it with the piano then you would go back to the velvet jacket for me and that outfit but this is the one that i would have him wearing because it pretty much covers the dick cavett show where he's sat in a studio in front of a studio audience in sort of a Parkinson style for the people in the UK, just a chat show. 
but also the shirt I think he wore in about 1972 at Madison Square Gardens in a live appearance. So that, uh, it would be quite accurate for that, although he did wear different trousers and uh, in that concert, if I remember rightly, the shirt is open with a sort of beigey colour t-shirt underneath that. So if you were going to have him rocking the guitar, I would go for a look more like that. So the outfits do all look great, I think. I think you can sort of alleviate the giraffe neck using the outfits and sort of using the pose tip I gave, sort of dip his neck forward. I'm not saying unbelievably so, but if you look at mine, if you think that's giraffe neck, please say so in the comments. I'm going to be putting some uh, photos up as well. But I think that if you move the figure around, getting posed up quite nicely, I think it looks very accurate. The outfits are all top quality, like I said. The nitpicks and the reason I'm going to knock the outfit score down to only a four is because of the missing red apple on the black slash neck t-shirt and because you've got to put the patches on yourself on this one. They could have done that, although it's not a massive job in all honesty, so it is a bit of a nitpick. The glasses are awesome, the footwear is awesome, like I said, well tailored, fit the body perfectly. Uh, oh, and another, I wish that there would have been faux buttons on this and just a Velcro fastening behind that, just for uh, ease of swapping the outfits on and off. But I will be leaving this outfit on now, so that really doesn't bother me. But like I said, fair's fair, and I've given the outfits four from possible five. Right, rolling on to the articulation or the body in general, as I'm gonna do on this figure. And moving up, you see I've not put a set of hands on and I've not put the head sculpt on, just to save John's blushes. So first things first, when you take the figure out of the box, the body inside feels very, very heavy. And I'm talking heavier than a Robocop, a diecast Robocop or a diecast Iron Man. Heavier than that, it's really dense, um, just heavy, basically. I've felt some heavy figures. I'm thinking a Terminator, a Predator. Like I said, the die-cast figures are really heavy. But this, I would say, is heavier than even those. It's got a dense metal armature inside it. Uh, a body that Molecule A says is newly developed. In all honesty, I would like to see the body without the skin on it, just so I can judge that, because I've seen the sort of synthetic human body and um, I'm guessing that the armature inside this is very similar to a thigh seam body. I could be wrong about that because I haven't ever seen one of those in hand, but that's how I see it. Aesthetically, it's not amazing. I will say it is pretty good proportions, I would think, to somebody like a John Lennon, but there's no no sort of muscular group build-up or anything like that, and quite odd-looking, sort of, particularly where the showed or the upper arm meets the body there's a bigger gap than a human would normally have legs are quite nicely done and i will say you would never display it without any clothes on it's not that kind of figure so i respect what they've done a couple of worries i might have is what happens if the inner body breaks how would you get to it I don't think it will because it's quite heavy and like i said quite i have seen pictures of the armature i will cut those in here uh, but if it were to sort of an elbow break or a knee break, how would you go about it, uh, having it fixed? The other thing, the material they use, I've seen the Tyson figure by Storm and that deteriorated over time. I know some of the old Optoys rubber body suits, they deteriorated over time. I don't know what this will do. It feels slightly different to anything else. I felt a lot softer, more like a... Uh, like a silicon feel, I suppose. I don't know if it is, but that's what it feels like to me. Very squidgy. Uh, so, yeah. I'm not going to do an articulation test because just looking at the frame, you're going to know where it moves, but I will talk you through it. So the neck, like I said, lean the neck slightly forward to make it look more natural. It has got the thick neck post. Then it has sort of the full range of movement through the shoulders. Uh, it lifts its arms up really high, spreads its arms really wide. Rotation in the upper bicep, double bend through the elbow, and then the hands sit on the metal wrist peg. Obviously the metal they're not gonna break, so you don't need a set of spare wrist pegs. There is a couple of sections in the ab area where it will sort of really crunch and sort of arch its back kind of thing. And then it has a, a real feeling pelvis inside. Now, my left leg has an awkward movement at the top of the left leg. 
it'll sort of move freely apart from when you try and put the legs really close together it's like the right leg will go close to the left but the left won't come right across the front of the right if that makes sense it's hard to show you obviously because i'm holding the camera double bend through the knee and rotation through the upper thigh and then down into the shin section and the metal ball joints that go into the cowboy boot or the sandals or flip-flops whatever you want to call them I will say the magnet base works awesomely, but it's better with the boot because then the surround or the shin section of the boot supports the leg where this, I think, might rock forward and back quite easily. So bear that in mind when you're posing it because it won't support it as well as the cowboy boots do. I like the body, although the look of it sort of leaves a lot to be desired. If they were to do like a topless figure, i.e. a Rambo or a vested figure, like the Big Trouble in Little China figure that they're going to be releasing, they might want to rethink the look of the body because this isn't going to cut it, although it does feel top quality. So I'm going to score the body as a whole and I'm going to give it... I'm going to say a good first attempt, but not amazing. Feels amazing, doesn't look amazing. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a three and a possible five. And I'm going to reserve judgment until I could see a body without the skin on it. Right, moving on to extras and accessories. What does the figure bring? Or what is included in the set, if you like? First, we'll just take a minute silence. Just for pose at video. I've got some pictures, don't worry about it. Be on Instagram. Be on our, our Facebook, that's one you can copy. Just get out, get a full, full shot for you. Pause it, get in 4K there, get some screenshots, copy it if you want, not a problem. You won't be hearing from me lawyers. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Gior Rig. No, I'll tell you, it looks simple. It's the chair from the uh, Joker, the DX11 Joker. It looks simple to do, but it's a hard pose to pull off. Not that it's hard to get a guitar in his hand. It's just to get it looking that natural. Look at it. It's got that busker vibe going on. Just sat down on Dick Cavett ears and Dick Cavett's going, here, yeah, yeah, I've got your guitar here, John. Plays a little ditty. I will do, mate. No worries about that. So he fires her up. Look at that. That's beautiful. In fact, hold on. Molecule A, if you're watching, or anybody top brass over at molecule a get that to get a screenshot of that and get that on your facebook page or use it to advertise your figure because i think that's better than any print uh, your promo shots i know i'm biased and i'm big-headed but that is beautiful but anyway let's talk about the subject in hand just show you everything the set includes and i'll also tell you what i wish it included now, as long as we're wishing for things, and obviously wishes don't often come true, the piano would have been a godsend because I'd have been able to do a pose from Imagine. I got it on my rotating base, and that would have looked beautiful and set this off. This review off a tree, I know it's a good one anyway, but it could have been a little bit better. But you're asking for too much to get a piano. But what they did include was the guitar. So that is one of the key accessories that the figure brings really nicely done now i'm not a guitar player by any stretch but it looks pretty accurate to me look down it strings are real move down to the sort of body of the guitar and the wood effect the dials obviously there the clip at the bottom that attaches to his strap the other end of the strap obviously the thread Wraps around the neck and then the knot goes through the other end of his strap. Just give him a bit of leeway, a bit of slack on there. So the guitar is a right touch. Another right touch is the bass. Really nicely done and fits in theme. I wouldn't have to display this inside this cabinet in all honesty because the eye gloss white sort of puck shaped bass with a magnet inside that holds the boots or the sandals really well. Just looks very clean and would match my uh, living room or dining room furniture. So I really do like that. Obviously it wouldn't be in line with my Hot Toys figures, but I don't really care about that too much. The base is a right touch. And I will say, although I won't show you because he's a, he's obviously sat on it, the underside of the base has got uh, 
the blue velvet with the um, John Lennon signature and obviously the figure name so on and so forth the company's insignia so to speak another good inclusion in this figure was the multiple outfit options so like I've said in the review the dress shirt which is navy and the velvet blazer with the black trousers the faux leather belt with the cowboy boots then obviously you take off the dress shirt and the blazer put on the long sleeve t-shirt uh, in black and then you would put that with the sculpted feet and flip-flops or sandals whatever you want to call them and again do look nice do look uh, pretty realistic I will say as I mentioned before I do believe there is a a red apple patch that's supposed to be there on the top I don't know why that's not there because it is in the making of imagine if you don't believe me check the YouTube because uh, there is a video of that another massive extra that they added is the singing portrait again really nicely done the second set of glasses so if you consider those to be the first set then the tinted yellow ones that are on the figure at the moment again both look really good and I will say credit to Molecule 8 because they did show some production shots and the glasses were slightly thicker. They listened to the complaints and they went back and they had the glasses all re-engineered and they've come out really good. They feel fragile in your hand, but not like they're gonna break whenever you touch them. They fit into the air sculpt really well and I think they've done a right, right job on them. Moving down. You have the uh, button fastening device. Most companies wouldn't include that. They'd expect you to supply your own tool. So that is a good touch. And I think it works pretty well. Although Dean Knight said he had some problems with it. So the button holes might have been tight on his. I don't know. But uh, I think it's a really big help. And you get three plectrums with JL on them. Or picks, whatever, for the guitar. And moving across, he has six hands in total. So I'd call the first set sort of hands in pockets because they're pretty flat with the fingers tied together. And then you've got the relaxed hands and then you've got, I think these are piano playing hands, but I've sort of used them for the guitar because they kind of look like a chord playing hand. Uh, and then the other piano hand as if he's kind of strumming it with his thumbnail. I know that's probably not accurate, but it's closest I can do. Then you get this black Molecule A envelope, which includes your clear plastic, sorry, I'll just pull that. your clear plastic certificate of authenticity. I got number 833-1000. So again, really nice touch. So you can see through it. You get the sort of brochure showing the brochure showing the body that is inside this I would say that's about right as well because the joints feel as if they are in place it might be slightly different to all this uh, body I don't know like I say you do get this brochure not a lot of pages but it does show you what you need to do there's no instruction manual which uh, I don't know if it needed one but it's always nice to have it and then you have the sort of the uh, sort of catalogue showing what's coming soon. Obviously, Willy Wonka, some will be interested in. Lord of Rings, I really like. I like Big Trouble in Little China. Travis Strikes Again, I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what the tick is, but I definitely know what Taxi Driver is. Robert De Niro, one of my heroes, so that would be a great figure to see. And obviously that picture representing Willy Wonka, which I think it would be the next release. So... Pretty good, pretty good set. The only massive glaring problem I see with it is the hands. And that's simply because they included the guitar. I think within the guitar box, they could have included two guitar holding hands. I had the Elvis uh, Elvis Presley figure by Enter Bay. And I've also seen the Jimi Hendrix by Saron Kim. Both of those had really well sculpted guitar hands. So like I said, an hand that would hold the guitar while holding the cords and also a hand that's holding the plectrum or pick, whatever you want to call it, 
and so the design so it really looks like he's playing the guitar now like we've all agreed that is an awesome pose and you're probably all going to steal it it is a beauty and you know it um but when you really study it the hands just aren't accurate i think two more hands wouldn't have been a lot to ask but all in all everything is really good also i'm going to mention here the body inside although you can't see it and the rubber body is a little bit unsightly but you can feel it and that makes a big difference when you get this figure in hand and you start moving it around you realize you're dealing with something above what hot toys have done and that is not easy to do because hot toys pretty much command the market as we all know but this figure feels a lot better quality than any hot toys figure that i felt and when i say quality how it moves and the weight of it and that sort of thing so i, I know i can't include that in the extra score but it is a thing to uh take note of also i will say at this point because i think it's worth a mention that every part of this figure had to be sent to the john lennon estate now be that yoko ono or another members of his family or accountants or ex-managers or whatever it is when they said the john lennon estate in my mind i'm thinking yoko ono that might be right i don't know but all this had to be approved, every single part, from the glasses to both sculpts to the outfits, probably down to his feet and his little toes. Now, that can't be easy to do because there'll be some, for example, Muhammad Ali. I don't think it's a coincidence that he died before that figure were released. They pretty much, after they die, I think they try and cash in on the likeness. But before they die, a lot of these stars or ex-legends or whatever you want to call them don't like to give the license rights out. It's pretty much where the value's tied up. So, and look at the smooth criminal figure from Michael Jackson that Octoys was showing five or six years ago that never got released down to the Michael Jackson estate. So the fact that they produced such good work and the John Lennon estate approved it, that says a lot. And I think, personally, that is where a lot of your money is going because I think they will take a massive cut from Molecule 8 for, from this figure. So respect to them for that. To give it a score, like I said, there's a couple of things. The patches I had to do myself, uh, the missing thing on the T-shirt, the hands that are missing, which I don't know. I think it would have been an easy fix, that. But because the bass is so good, I'm giving that a point. The guitar and hands are good, so I'm giving that a point. The spare outfits are getting a point, and the head sculpt is getting a point. So I'm giving it a four from a possible five. And that leads me straight into value like i said i've explained everything it brings where i think the money's going to for a first attempt i think it is absolutely outstanding and you know i wouldn't lie for any company be it a free figure or whether it's cost me i won't lie to the masses to sort of help sell a few figures i just won't do it so whether it's sent from a seller or the people who produced it i always review honestly like i said whether that jeopardizes getting another figure from this company then so be it i hope they do watch this review and I hope they do like the things I've said about it and I also hope they listen to some of the things that I've noticed that are missing on it uh, so it'd be nice to get a little bit of feedback from Molecule A or VJ or even Lee just to say yeah Rick we agree with that but I think you're out of order saying that it would be nice to get some communication going now value wise the way I understand it and don't quote me on this I think you can get this figure direct from Molecule 8 on the website for 300 US dollars and that includes shipping. Now, I don't know what the conversion is. Um, it used to be about 200 pounds shipped that, 300 dollars. I don't know if it still is. Or if you're in the UK and you want to go to a trusted seller, you can go to Lee Ward at the Good, the Bad and the Robots. I think he sells it for 250 English pounds. So obviously, it's, it's up to you where you go, but they're the price differences. I think for the value, what I'm going to say is you either buy it from Molecule 8 at that price or you buy it from Lee Ward. Either way, you're going to get a really good figure. So the bang for the buck is definitely there. I think they priced it pretty perfectly. Don't listen to what the people say on Facebook um, because they haven't received it. There's not many people receive this figure as it stands. Those that have probably always intended to buy it, the ones who are slagging it off are just looking at a company to jump on top of because they had no defense for themselves. 
Fair enough. They said they were going to ship it sometime earlier this year and it never came and it got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. But that happens. You've got to sort of, if you want to pre-order summer, that's what comes along with it. Sometimes you've got to wait longer than you wanted to. Did they deliver in the end? For my money, yeah, they definitely did deliver in the end. I think it's a really good collectible and it's no lower quality than any figure that I've seen before. And I will say it's a lot higher quality than a lot of the stuff I've seen before. Uh, so, I'm going to sort of go halfway between. Say if you can get direct from Molecule 8 for 200 quid, or you can get it from Lee Wolf for 250. Let's call it 225. I think that's priced pretty perfectly. And like I said, apart from the things that are missing that could have included, the bang for the buck is definitely there. So, for the value, I'm going to give it a four and a possible five. Because I'm not saying it's perfect, because I don't like paying over 200 pounds for figures. But it's really competitive, and I think for a first release, I think they priced it right where it needed to be priced. And bearing in mind, again, the body, and not just making the body, but the, the sort of design and realisation of the body, or even if it's taking ideas or making a completely brand new body, all that work went into it. So when you take that into account as well, I think the value is pretty great. But for the case of this review, I'm only gonna give it a four from a possible five. So that's a total for those who've been working it out of 25 from a possible 30. That's an awesome score. Anything that gets above 20 has done really well because it's ticking a lot of boxes. Uh, those who are still waiting for it, it is worth it when you get it. Massive thank you to Molecule A, massive thanks to Lee Ward. Uh, but for now, it's a Clipper King, and I'm out of here.